Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today, join me back at base. And for a totally different episode to normal, I want to start doing things differently on the channel. And I want to be able to try and bring some more insights into the backstories to each of the images. So what I want to try and do is on a weekly basis, if not a fortnightly basis, or maybe ad hoc, I'm not quite sure, all depends on each of the shoots, but I'm going to take you with me here to give you a bit of a background story to each of the images, talk you through how I would have edited those images, any lessons I would have learned in relation to it that helpful for me, or that could be helpful for you also. So the first images that I'm going to go through are from my recent shoot to Valencia Island for Sunrise. And if you haven't seen that episode, actually I'll link to it here. But thank you to very, thank you very much to everybody who's given me some really, really great feedback. I'm glad that you actually enjoyed it. For me, it's, it was a fantastic adventure because it gave me an opportunity to be at a location that I wouldn't necessarily normally be at for Sunrise. And of course the camper van allowed me to be able to do that. And it was actually that moment that I decided to do the van tour. So thank you as well to everybody who enjoyed that video. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll link to that video as well here. But um, I was waiting for the rain to pass. Looking at the weather forecasts, I had a very, very small window of opportunity for the following morning. So I said, okay, I would sit it out. I spent the evening in the van. I could hear the rain hitting off the van all night. And I could also hear the waves crashing close by. So I was extremely happy when I woke up the following morning. And not only were the waves still there, but there was an incredible glow in the sky. Now, I took a number of different shots during that morning. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out two shots. I'm going to jump onto the computer there and I'll take you through in relation to starting out the image, where it was raw, what I like about it, what could I improve in relation to it. And I'll take you through a very quick then editing process of how I would have processed the image to get to the final result. So yeah, let's go. Right, so over onto the computer here now, and I've selected two images out of the over 1,000 images that I took that morning. And that's the thing with seascape photography. Don't be afraid to take many shots because you're always going to get a different thing and a different result from every single wave. The challenge, of course, is that when you get back to base, you have to go through all those images. But I find that really interesting and I enjoy that process. And I hope you do too if you're a seascape photographer. So on the two images that I picked here, the first image is one that I took very, very early in the morning. As you can see here, looking at the sky, the hasn't, hadn't even lit up yet. So it was still pre-dawn. But what that allowed me to do to be able to have a one second exposure at F6 6.3 and my ISO was at 200 and I shot that at 16 mil and then the second shot that I'm going to talk about is this shot here because towards the end of the shoot as the light had come up I decided I wanted to tune into some of the waves and there was some incredibly big waves that were breaking just off the coast here and there's an example so what I would normally do when I look at these images here and if you look uh, up here on the Insta on the histogram Instagram uh, on the histogram so you can see that I underexpose the image and I purposely do that when I'm dealing with quite a lot of water because I want to protect the whites if I was to expose that as normal I run the risk then of having highlights in these areas here not so much prevalent obviously because there was no real sunlight but because I was going for a one second exposure I ran that risk and I didn't want to lose any of the detail and I'll show you what detail is within these waves as well because the media thing when you look at both these rods here is that they're pretty much flat images not so much this one because there's a bit of light there but definitely when you see the finished image you'll see what comes out in regards to the texture and also the colors so starting on this here a very simple process that I would normally do and you know I think it's something that I probably will show on each of these videos as well as just my process that I would follow and the steps that I would take so when I first look at the image here what I look to do and say okay is the image straight and that's the first thing that I generally do is I'll always make sure that I can get the horizon straight so to do that just grab one of these here and bring it up and then you can take your uh, image and move it along towards your line here and make sure that the image is straight. This for me is straight, that's fine. So I can now reset that back out because I managed to get that straight. And something that I always recommend to do is don't be, I wrote an article about it on F stoppers is don't be a lazy photographer, straighten your horizon. It's right and it's best to get it when you're actually in the field. Now, also what I have on the histogram here is I've got this little button clicked and if you click that, it will highlight in the image here. And if I get close this down just to show you, 
an area that is underexposed. So that's the blacks are blacker than black. That's okay, it's on a rock below me. It's a very, very small area. So I'm happy with my exposure in relation to this shot. And what I loved about this shot was the movement that you have within this water from these waves that had come in. And now that was the wave going back out. So first thing I'll do here is I'll say, okay, is the image underexposed? So I think it is because I underexposed the image on purpose. I remember mentioning that as well during on the video. So if I just take this and say, okay, I'm gonna bring this up by say one stop. If you look at your histogram, which is always going to tell you if you've gone too far or too little. So I can keep going over here and I can go up as far as to over two um, stops of, uh, of exposure. And now when I start to look and say, okay, is there anything overexposed? Yes, a tiny area here within the sky. But I don't want to go that far in relation to it. So I'll probably drop it back down to maybe one and a half, okay? Next thing then is to look at your highlights. And you know, highlights are something which if you go to the extremes, it only deals with the brightest parts within the image. Now, looking at this here, it's telling me I've got these two small areas here that are overexposed, even if I drop the highlights down. If I double click this, it will bring it back to where it's at here. So I'm going to leave the highlights for now. On the shadows, I do know that I had the darkened areas here below me. So again, look, I can bring that up. And that's the beauty of shooting in RAW. You have all this detail within the image and it, within the file that you can bring back up if you wish later. For me, I wouldn't bring the highlights up to 100, but I'll bring the highlights up left for now anyway, let's just say to around about 56. Now, white's very important, um, and particularly when you've got quite a lot of white within the water. If I was to, for example, bring the highlights all the way down here and then bring my whites down, then the white be kind of comes a gray, and obviously the water is not gray. So I'm gonna bring my uh, highlights back up to where they were at here. Oh, sorry, down to where it was at here. And then I'm gonna bring my whites back to where it was here. And if you look, it's also affecting the white in the sky because that was the tiny gap that I had allowing that light to come through. But what it also is doing here is it's brightening up these waves. So I can bring up my whites here and then I can circumvent that and go the opposite way by bringing my highlights back down. So that's going to affect the sky. And if I take my shadow or my exposure back down again here, you'll see I'm getting more detail again in the sky here. Now, when that's highlighted, it means that you're losing all the detail. So we'll come back to that because I don't think I need to bring up my uh, whites overall. And then my blacks, which are the blacker than black, basically down the end here, I can bring those up and you'll see the histogram is telling me what I can do. Now, the key thing when you're starting to look at images like this is, you know, you want the image to have punch. So on the next ones here, texture, if you bring that all the way extreme, you get a lot more texture within the rock, but it kind of degrades the image. And I very rarely use texture, probably even for now, just to show that detail within the rock. There's enough detail in the rock anyway, but I'll bring it to uh, plus 16. Clarity, I rarely use, but dehaze is something that I can use quite a lot because even though there was no major haze here, what it does, if you look here, as I increase this, is actually darkens out the sky and gives you a bit more detail. But it also now as well will remove that highlight that I had here. So the brightness that I had in the sky is now going to be gone. Vibrance, the color in the sky is a very important thing here. So you know, we click on this just to give it a tad of an increase and you can already see the red is coming out here in relation to here. But when I look at this image, it does seem quite blue. So a very good trick that you can have from your auto for your white balance is instead of going in here and saying, okay, I got to auto white balance, which will make it even bluer, okay? Because it's taking a reading from the overall image, uh, overall measure of the, of the frame. Click on this dropper here and just pick any gray cloud. And when you pick any gray cloud, it brings it back then to what the natural colors are because the sensor will see in gray. And already you can see that this image now, because I fixed the white balance, is looking a lot more natural. So within here on the basic tab, I know now looking at the histogram that I've got a bit more that I can play over here on the right hand side. So I can actually now brighten up this image here and I can bring it up now to let's say 1.5 here. And already we can see a much, much better uh, image. Contrast is something I think which is very, very interesting is that, you know, if you increase your contrast, it's the difference between brights and darks, you'll end up getting a much nicer image as well then overall. So even looking at that and that image here, just by using the basics panel is very straightforward, not much in relation to needing to be done. 
Now, uh, if I go into another area here, which is lens correction. Now, Lightroom is very good because it'll automatically pick up what your lens is and apply all your, your lens corrections because you can get a slight bow on horizon if you're shooting at a wide angle lens, or you can also get chromatic aberration if you're shooting at a higher f-stop. So that's already been done here. I don't need to go through in relation to that. And now if I look at the image here overall, what do I want to try and do? I want to give it a bit more punch. So I'm going to increase my contrast slightly. I'm going to bring my highlights back up because I'm not really concerned about that very much so bright part here on the right hand side because obviously the sky was the brightest here. Uh, and then I'm just going to increase the saturation ever so slightly. And now you see that the color is coming out here in relation to the sky. Um, and then the final thing that I want to do with the new feature that's within uh, Lightroom is I want to be able to make sure that there's no noise within the image. Now, if I zoom in uh, here to look at the image, you can see that there's a bit of noise here in relation to the sky. So what I can do with that is you go into detail and then you can click on noise reduction. And that uses technology to be able to make sure that it only removes the artifacts of noise from the parts of the image that uh, have noise instead of just applying it globally across the entire scene. So if I click on that, that's only going to take a couple of minutes here, or not even a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds, but it's going to give us a look here at what it's going to be with or without. And if we look at the part here with the sky, so if I click on this here, that's it, that has no noise reduction. And now here with noise reduction, you see that it's a lot smoother and a cleaner image. If we bring that down here towards the uh, mountain, you can then see very quickly how it enhances in relation to that. So I'm going to click on that here. Um, that will take maybe, I don't know, 40 seconds to do, but I'll cut back in once it's done. Okay, so that's now done. And as you can see here, you know, the detail in the sky, it's not after, normally when you apply uh, noise reduction, it can make the image quite soft, but this with the new technology they have in Lightroom, it's very good in relation to that. Now, looking at this as well, you can see that I have these power lines. Now I did toy with the idea of removing the power lines, but because I had so many images and there were slightly different compositions, it meant that I had to do it quite a lot. I may end up, if I was to ever do a print or anything like that of this image, going in and removing those power lines. But for now, I decided to just leave them in. But if we start looking around this image here, you can see we get a nice glow here from the sky hitting off on the rocks. And then you've got this fantastic motion in the water here. And again, as it goes back in and out, and now the final thing that I'd like to do on this is to make sure I've got no dust spots. Now, you know, again, I suppose I joke about this, but you know, with my Canon camera, I have a shutter that comes down in front of my uh, sensor. Not all camera brands have that, so they can suffer from dust spots quite a lot. But nonetheless, I still can get dust spots. And you can start, you know, zooming in and you can start looking around uh, the image here and seeing is there any dust spots. But a good trick that I have um, which I use quite a lot, is to use your dehaze. So if you look at dehaze here, it's at 22. If I whack that up fully, okay, what that will show me is anything that has any noise in relation to it. And it's a very simple, quick scan through the image here to be able to pick it out and find it. You wouldn't see it ordinarily, but by using this, you actually uh, will. Now, I think on this occasion, I have no noise in relation to that image. So I will just take my dehaze back down and now, that is effectively my final image. If I look again at my histogram, I have a small bit of overexposed here in relation to the sky. Now again, I can be finite detail and I could just reduce that down ever so slightly and it's not going to affect the overall image. Or what I could do is I can go in here and I can uh, select the sky. So if I wanted to go in here and just create a, um, a new mask, okay, with this, I can just go in and say, okay, select sky. And what that's going to do is it's going to uh, using AI, I suppose, select the sky. And then any adjustments that I do here will only affect the sky. But the challenge that you have, if you look here, is it's not getting the sky, but it's also slightly dripping over in relation to the uh, the mountains that are there. So you don't necessarily use it at all times. But uh, from my point of view anyway, here in relation to it, I don't need to do much except maybe just give that a slight bit of a darken. And if I want to be able to bring up that color, that's red, that's there, I can increase my saturation slightly. And then I increase that here and I also see it in the cloud that's over there. But overall then, if I look at this uh, image, for me, I think it's a nice image. The water that's moving in and out as well is great. And obviously the sky, but a big difference to how we would have started off in relation to um, this image uh, before I would have edited it. So that's the first image, okay? Um, oh, by the way, when you create um, uh, the 
noise reduction, it creates a new DNG file. So I'm working on the enhanced DNG file here. If I go back into the, the other file, which is the one without the uh, noise reduction, and then I give you a look at the original, you can see you know, all the detail that's come out here in relation to the water. So again, if I'm to look here on this area, Okay, so if I zoom in, you can see that there's a huge amount of detail that is uh, preserved uh, within the waves and you can see all the texture that's there as well. So not much in relation to from an editing point of view as far as that image is concerned, but again, I'm really happy with the, um, the finished result. And again, it reminds me uh, of that morning. Now that morning I had some incredibly big waves that were coming in and breaking against this rock here. This is one that I just picked because it was pre-dawn. Uh, but yeah, speaking of waves, let's have a look at the next image that I decided to do. So this was one of the waves that was breaking in and I took probably, well, I think I can get six frames or five frames per second on my cannon so I was just firing off at high speed and catching this wave as, a, as it was coming in and breaking in but I decided to pick this one frame here and I'll take you through again very similar to what I would have done on the previous uh, image so first and foremost I'll take my um, horizon and make sure that my horizon is straight that was slightly off because I think I was shooting these uh, handheld yeah so that's one five hundred of a second I shot at f4 and the reason I shot at f4 by the way is because I was focusing on the waves so I didn't need to have a huge depth of field and I was far enough away because I was using my um, long lens so first thing I do is I straighten my horizon here and just to give you an idea on something here you know don't be afraid as well to be able to utilize the uh, auto button on Lightroom because it takes a measured approach across the image and it can give you a good start so we'll do that in relation to this one here and now we click the auto and automatically straight away we have you know this well exposed image here it's bang smack in the, in the center in relation to the histogram but one of the things now that i'm looking at this is i don't like this triangle up here it's a bit distracting it's taking away in relation to that and i also feel that this may benefit by going into a 16.9 crop so if i take this into a 16.9 crop making sure again now that my horizon is exactly straight now we've got a better image because we're losing that distraction that's up in the top left hand corner and we're now purely on this wave. And we've only used automatic settings here. We haven't done anything yet in regards to applying my own uh, preferences in relation to it. We can take the uh, white balance. I don't think we need to change it, but find anything that's gray within the image. So let's just say this bit of rock over here. Okay, it's a bit better. You get a bit more texture. It's, it's not as kind of a dark an image. So let's stick with the, uh, the eyedropper and what that has done. Next, we're going to say, okay, auto has taken the highlights all the way down. I'd like to be able to bring them up so I can bring this up here. Shadows don't necessarily bring them up because it's only bringing the items in the back, which effectively are taking away from what this image is. And what I actually love about this image is that I'm taking the shot, but there's land behind it. So typically, you know, if you're taking a shot of a wave like this, you're looking out to an expanse of sea, but there's land behind this. Um, whites, again, I can bring those up slightly, but if I bring them up, if you look at the wave, you know, we're starting to lose some of the texture and the detail, particularly if we look, if you look at this area here. So if I bring that down, you see you've got texture and now I lose the texture. And even on the histogram, the histogram is not blowing. So for me, I would bring that down here slightly. It is going to be indicative of what you see within the screen. But for me, I'm going to leave it in relation to here and then blacks. OK, I can bring that down again. And now what that's doing is also adding more contrast to the darker parts of the image. So I'll bring the blacks down here. Texture, I don't necessarily think we need to use it, but let's give it a, a little tap. But dehaze, I think, is going to change this because as you can see now, even as I increase this, it's creating more depth within the image, but also the water is becoming darker and more ominous per se. So let's just say we bring dehaze up to 30. Vibrance automatically has gone up to 15 here by auto. So I'm just gonna increase it here to 27, take my saturation, bring that back down. I don't think I need to uh, do anything in relation to that. And then when I look at contrast and contrast, you see here, as I bring this up, look at all the texture that's coming in that water here, but it's not necessarily going to be the right part for this image because it's now too dark. A slight touch of contrast here, I think would be good. And I'm going to then just slightly increase the image again here. And now what you have is a, an image, which if we look at the detail in the wave here, you can see the water beads, you can see the textures, you can see the curves. 
uh, you can see it also here as it breaks over so for me looking at that image here on this edit you know i probably have gone darker here on this edit than i would have done originally but even now saying that i like this finished edit and it's something i think that i'd recommend you to do as well because when you are editing images don't just edit them straight away edit them then come back to them again because you know you might look and go geez what was i thinking well for me on this one here very simple very straightforward now i could also as well apply um a uh, gradient here so i can go from a radial gradient just as an example if i want to drag this here and make this um let's just say this size okay we can bring that down slightly okay and what that's going to do is going to affect everything within here so what i could theoretically speaking do is bring up the exposure in this one area and nowhere else and that's very helpful as well that if you've got something that you want to bring more attention to like you can edit this entire image just purely by using gradients you don't necessarily have to have any global adjustments everything can be done in the areas that you want it to do so for me it's something that i could utilize quite a lot because i could say okay i want to increase the exposure here maybe i want to bring out the color in the water a bit more and only the water and as you can see here now i'm getting more of the deeper aqua green in relation to that image and i haven't affected anything else as well also looking at the histogram to finish up there's nothing underexposed there's nothing overexposed and again if we look at this overall image here you know that's the uh, finished image that's the before that's the after so again what have i done i've basically concentrated on the star of the show for me which was the wave and i've given a bit more depth in relation to it i probably would reduce that um saturation ever so slightly but at least it gives you an idea of what you can do from the raw file to the finished file and before i'd finish up on this again i go back in here to detail and i would say okay de uh, go into denoise and hit the denoise and then remove any noise that's within that as well so yeah two images from this morning two insights i suppose in relation to how i would approach them uh, i've explained i think what i like about the images and i hope that you can get something as well from this episode so thank you very much as always for joining if you haven't seen this episode like i said i'll link to it uh, in the end screen uh, i'd love for you to check it out and stay tuned because i've got an excellent episode now as well coming on sunday where i continue on my adventure here in valencia island but i go up and i go up 300 meters for some epic views of this entire area so thank you as always as your first time on the channel please hit the subscribe button give me a like give me a comment and until the next time schlong the fall Thank you.